Now, I'm very, very excited about the next panel because, you know, we've heard from a lot of voices today so far. We've heard from teachers, doctors, politicians, councillors, business owners, suppliers. Frankly, we've heard from a lot of adults. But what about the people that school food affects the most? And so I'm really quite delighted to welcome on stage a bunch of young people. Please, could you give it up for Janai, Harrison, Rushda, Lyba, Sneha, Saf, and Hassan? Welcome, guys. Oh, this is, this is exciting already that you're all spread out. So uh, this group of bright young things are a combination of youth ambassadors working with the Food Foundation and also youth board members of Bike Back 2030. And they are going to shake things up a bit. So they have actually got together and written a piece of performance poetry, and they have traveled from all across the country here today to deliver it to us specifically. I've been looking forward to this all day. I heard little snippets from the rehearsals, and I was like, well, I need to hear the full thing. So um, without further ado, guys, over to you. Young food campaigners from Food Foundation and Bite Back came together to write a piece of spoken word poetry for this event. Their piece describes their experience of free school meals from the perspectives of six different people. I wake up with food on my mind. Breakfast, the most important meal of the day. I mean, that's what most people say. Out of that state, I no longer stay. I receive my armor, my helmet of health. Gone is that feeling once felt. But I'm lucky to receive the armor I get. Because my friends on the outside, we often forget. I wake up with food on my mind. This time of the day just fills me, fills me with dread, anxiety, the knowing of what's to come or not to. Distractions in my morning, my one true saviour. I see my friends happy, full belly, so I smile. I put on my mask to hide the fact that I'm hungry and too scared to ask for help, too scared to take off my mask. My favourite part of the day? It's lunch. Yeah, I deal with some taunts from peers whose armour they flaunt, but I don't care because at least I receive my lunch. I receive food. I receive something. I get to put on my armour, my shield of nutrition, my chains of equality. I get food. Food which otherwise I wouldn't be able to afford. If not, my future would be hanging by a single cord. The worst part of my day, lunch. This is where I have to wear my mask most, as a way of protection. Protect that little boy that wants to eat, so I can feel my massive appetite. The want to not only want the change, but be the change. I want, no, I need this change. I can't concentrate. I can't sleep well. I can't survive, let alone thrive. I look around and just see smiles, laughter, just a fragment of my imagination. Oh great, it's home time. I get to leave. I get to leave this place and I should begin to feel free, but I can't. I've eaten all my food. I have no more armor left. This feeling I try to forget. The armor comes off and the mask comes on. Lying to everyone, and I know it's wrong, but food, we have none. 
well, at least tomorrow's a new day and I get to eat. Home time, the single greatest moment of my day, the rush of excitement. I've peaked on my roller coaster and it's finally the drop. That feeling of just pure euphoria, wow, what a feeling. Equipping my armor, taking off my mask and placing on that helmet of health, using my shield and nutrition to protect me, protect me from feeling hungry again. As I dawn those chains of equality, I feel the power, I have the power to not only want the change, but be the change. But tomorrow, it's a new day, a new struggle. I see potential and I see so much in my classroom of countless hungry children. The ones that deserve so much more, but are forgotten, forgotten by pathetic thresholds. Frustration oozes from my every pore as my brightest student falls asleep. Drowning in hunger to even think past the agony of their lunches, empty treats. Another one stares far into the window, submerged in a dream when they'll be remembered, a dream of the day when they can look forward to a full stomach and a fruitful lesson. Their potentials escaping, escaping like a flood that overpowers goodwill and determination. Futures restricted in our government's invisible prison as I try to pick the lock with my desperate teaching. It isn't enough, but it could be. I joined the school five years ago. Little Harrison was year seven. I'd ask him how his lessons went while dishing up two meals. I used to tease and he would grin, puff up his chest and say, one's mum's. She works all day and so do I. School lunch helps us both. In year nine for Harrison, the kitchen beamed as he yelled, mum's got a new job. We gave him extra fruit that day. We knew it would make it home. Harrison stopped talking then, not just a moody teen, but 16 shouldn't be hollowed cheeks in stolen rolls. We'd look away as he took two. One's mum's, he'd shrug as he caught my eye, years not yet lived dark under his. Except that blind eye hinders. Harrison is far from one. Less chubby cheeks, more hungry hands, with teary eyes as we lie, there's nothing to be done. Here you just met Harrison. I've met a million and one. Scooping air onto empty trays. Something must be done. As the parent, I want to bring the world and put it at my child's feet. Feet that deserve more. More than the struggles of food poverty. More than the storms of uncertainty. My child has wings to spread. Wings that deserve more. More than the shackles of hungry stomachs. More than the skies of despair. My child's worth more than the world. More than the galaxies, more than the universe. But my reality is, I see my child struggling. Struggling to continuously fake their smiles to continuously hide their true desires. No matter how hard I work, it's never enough. I believe it's teamwork, but why does life still get tough? I am the politician in an extremely high position. I am the hope holding tight onto the rope. Or am I? Am I the dark, scary nights that take away the shining light, the start of the fires, the extinguisher of their desires. Am I the projector of their dreams? Or am I the mic of their screams, the achievement of power? Or is it really lost within each hour? Thank you for listening to us. <laughs>
Wow. Um, that was very emotional and incredibly delivered and performed and intensely powerful. I felt like I was in that classroom. I was hearing all of these different voices about how it affects all of the people involved. And I feel like what you created was like a direct voice from what you experienced at schools. Thank you so much for that, it was, it was incredible. I wanna ask you a few questions. Um, there were a few different voices in that performance. So we had, we had a young person who was eligible for free school meals, we had one who wasn't. We had a school cook, a teacher, a parent, and a politician. What made you guys um, want to include so many different voices in this piece? I'll answer that if you want. Um, I think it's an issue that affects so many different people. If you look at it just as a ground level and one dimensional, it affects the young person in question. But if you look wider than that, it affects the parents, the politicians, the school cooks that have to say no to the kid that just wants to eat, just wants their human rights. So it just affects everyone in the situation. Mm. And what would you say is the main message you wanted to get across today to the audience and to everyone who will be listening and, and reading about this performance. What was it that you wanted to get across? Um, here we just showed and mentioned a few of the people who are affected by free school meals. And the main message we wanted to get across was that it's not only the young person who does not get a school meal that's affected, it's the whole community, their parents, their friends, their brothers, sisters, I can go on and keep on mentioning names and they will never end. And we just have to realize it's just one meal and affects so many lives. Is there really too much? Mm, I think that's such a good point because, you know, we think of it as, you know, it's £2.50 for one portion and you think that's great, that will feed a child one meal. But that money, that meal actually sort of filters out and positively affects so many more people and I think you really got that message across today, thank you. Um, why is it important, do you think, to extend the eligibility of free school meals? I think it's because it's not just, I say I think, I know, it's not just those 800,000. Yes, it's key to get it to them, but what about every kid? because every single child needs to eat lunch and every single parent will find themselves thinking, what are they gonna eat? And just that pressure, not even necessarily financially, but even emotionally for those parents is such a massive pressure and that can be relieved both financially and emotionally through free school meals being extended. It's not just about the 800,000 and it's not just about the kids. It's about everyone and everything. And I want, I mean, you guys are just awesome, by the way. But I want to like, find out what made you all want to get involved with the Food Foundation and become a youth ambassador or become a youth board member of Bite Back. What made you guys want to get involved with this campaign? <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bit of a cold. <laughs> Um, but for me, I joined the Food Foundation in 2018 with, alongside one of my friends and we just had someone come in when we were doing this programme just to talk to us about food insecurity and what it was and how um, you don't have to come from like the poor background or be on free school meals to, be, to still be affected by this and we were very moved and we were just like, we, we, can't, we related to it and we were just like, this is not right in 2019 when it was 20, 2020, 2021, 2022, living in England, the UK, this is not right, that like kids are going hungry in, in school and it has a knock-on effect. It doesn't just affect them for that day, it affects the mood, it affects how they do in school, it then affects the teachers. So I don't understand why you wouldn't want this to happen because it's only benefiting people. Kind of feels like so, a no-brainer. Yeah. Anyone else want to answer that question? Why you guys wanted to get involved with the campaign? Go on, so I joined Bite Back earlier this year because I'm passionate about child health. And I think everyone in this room knows that what you put into your body, what you eat, is going to impact your health emotionally, physically, and in so many ways. 
And actually, that shouldn't be an issue for, ch for children, for young people. They shouldn't have to worry about what they're putting in their bodies, and they shouldn't have to worry that they are not being given the resources and the chance to actually f eat healthily because of the government. So actually, that's why I joined, because I believe it's important, everybody knows it's important, and it's something that needs to change. Wonderful. Anyone else want to have a final word at all? Um, I'll answer. I think the, the subject is just real, isn't it? It's a sub it affects every single person on this planet, food does. It's something that can unite and diversify every single person. Each different person in this room has a favorite food. Each different person has a different relationship with food. And that's the beauty of food. And we're taking that away from a child. We're taking away the child's human right just to eat. That's why it's real. Well, um, please can we give another round of applause? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well done, well done, well done, well done, well done.